In 1888, a notorious serial killer who went by the name Jack the Ripper roamed the impoverished Whitechapel region of London, England. The killer was also referred to as the Leather Apron and the Whitechapel Murderer in both criminal case files and contemporary journalistic reporting. Discover the terrifying mystery of Jack the Ripper by exploring the spooky streets of Victorian London. Come along for a trip through the shadows of history as we investigate the unsolved murders that have captured the attention of people worldwide. Prepare to explore the mystery as we solve the eerie conundrum of Jack the Ripper's elusive identity. So, for complete detail, keep watching the video till end. In the mid-19th century, England saw an influx of Irish immigrants and Jewish refugees, leading to overcrowding in the east end of London. The parish of Whitechapel became overcrowded, with a significant economic underclass developing. The area was plagued by poverty, robbery, violence, and alcohol dependency. The poverty led many women to prostitution, with 62 brothels and 1,200 women working as prostitutes. Social tensions increased, leading to demonstrations and public unrest, such as Bloody Sunday. Jack the Ripper's attacks on East End London prostitutes involved cutting throats and mutilating internal organs, leading to speculation of his anatomical or surgical knowledge. Rumors intensified in 1888, with numerous letters from suspected perpetrators. The name Jack the Ripper originated from a Dear Boss letter and from Hell letter, both believed to be hoaxes. The brutal nature of the murders and media coverage led the public to believe in a single serial killer, Jack the Ripper, fueled by sensational media coverage. The Ripper's international notoriety was fueled by newspaper coverage, leading to a legend. Police investigations into 11 murders failed to definitively link them to the 1888 murders. The canonical five are considered most likely. The legends continue to captivate public imagination. The Whitechapel murders were 11 separate murders from April 1888 to February 1891, involving women in the East End. Five of these murders, known as the Canonical Five, are believed to be the work of the Ripper. Experts attribute the distinctive features of the Ripper's modus operandi to deep throat wounds and extensive mutilation. On April 3, 1888, Smith was robbed and sexually assaulted in White Whitechapel, resulting in peritonitis and death. The attack was linked to later murders, but most authors attribute it to general East End gang violence unrelated to the Ripper case. Tebram was murdered in 1888, suffering 39 stab wounds to her throat, lungs, heart, liver, spleen, stomach, and abdomen, with additional knife wounds to her breasts and vagina, and not raped. The Tabram murder, linked to later Ripper murders due to its savagery, lack of motive, and proximity to later crimes, is not considered a connection due to the difference in wound pattern. The five Ripper victims are Mary Ann Nichols, Annie Chapman, Elizabeth Stride, Catherine Endows, and Mary Jane Kelly. Nichols was found dead in Bucks Row, Whitechapel, with her throat severed by two deep cuts. Chapman's body was found in the backyard of 29 Hanbury Street, Spitalfields, with her throat severed by two deep cuts. Chapman's autopsy revealed her uterus and bladder and vagina removed. Elizabeth Stride and Catherine Endows were killed in the early morning hours of September 30, 1888, in Dutfield's Yard, off Burner Street. Stride's death was a single clear-cut incision, causing her left carotid artery and trachea to be severed. The absence of further mutilations has led to uncertainty about whether Stride's murder was committed by the Ripper or if he was interrupted during the attack. The murders of Elizabeth Stride and Eddowes in London, known as the Double Event, were a series of mutilations that took at least five minutes. Eddowes's throat was severed, her abdomen ripped open, and her intestines placed over her right shoulder. Her face was disfigured, with her nose severed, cheeks slashed, and cuts through her eyelids. A graffito, the Jews are the men that will not be blamed for nothing, was found at the entrance to a tenement in Whitechapel, implying a Jewish involvement in the murders. The Golston Street graffito, written by the murderer, washed away before dawn. Mary Jane Kelly's mutilated body was found in a single room at 13 Miller's Court, 
with her face hacked beyond all recognition, throat severed down to the spine, and her uterus, kidneys, and one breast placed beneath her head. Multiple ashes found within the fireplace at 13 Miller's Court suggested Kelly's murderer burned combustible items to illuminate the room. The canonical five murders in 1894 were committed at night, close to a weekend, either at the end of a month or a week after. The mutilations became increasingly severe as the series progressed, except for Stride, whose attacker may have been interrupted. The belief that these five murders were committed by the same perpetrator is derived from contemporaneous documents, such as Sir Melville McNaughton's report in 1894 and a letter by police surgeon Thomas Bond to Robert Anderson in 1888. Some researchers argue that some of the murders were undoubtedly the work of a single killer, while others believe the six murders between Tebram and Kelly were the work of a single killer. Mary Jane Kelly is considered the Ripper's final victim, and the crimes were believed to have ended due to the culprit's death, imprisonment, institutionalization, or emigration. The White Techapal murders filed details for other murders, Rose Milet, Alice McKenzie, the Pynchon Street Torso, and Francis Coles. Rose Milet's strangled body was found in Clark's Yard, High Street Poplar on 20 December 1888, with no sign of struggle. Alice McKenzie's murder in Castle Alley, White Temple, was believed to be a Ripper murder, but opinions among writers are divided. The Pynchon Street torso was discovered beneath a railway arch in Pynchon Street, White Temple, with extensive bruising and mutilated abdomen. Frances Coles was found with her throat cut under a railway arch in White Temple on 13 February 1891, and was later charged with her murder. Ada Wilson, a young dressmaker, survived being stabbed twice in the neck with a clasp knife on 28 March 1888. Annie Farmer, a 40-year-old woman, reported an attack on 21 November 1888. The Whitehall mystery, a term coined for the discovery of a headless torso of a woman, was discovered in the basement of the new Metropolitan Police Headquarters in Whitehall. Both the Whitehall mystery and the Pynchon Street case may have been part of a series of murders known as the Thames Mysteries, committed by a single serial killer dubbed the Torso Killer. It is debatable whether Jack the Ripper and the Torso Killer were the same person or separate serial killers active in the same area. Police have been working on a murder case involving a white tipple man, who was allegedly murdered by a man with a solitary habit and periodic attacks of homicidal and erotic mania. The murderer, Thomas Bond, has been questioned by Robert Anderson, who has offered a reward of £50 for information leading to his capture. Bond's assessment is the earliest surviving offender profile, based on his examination of the most extensively mutilated victim and post-mortem notes from the four previous canonical murders. He also suggests that the homicidal impulse may have developed from a revengeful or brooding condition of the mind or religious mania. However, there is no evidence of sexual activity with any of the victims, and attempts to identify the murderer are hindered by the lack of surviving forensic evidence. The Ripper's murders, centered around weekends and public holidays, have led to various theories about his identity. Some believe he was a regular employee, while others suggest he was an educated upper-class man. Ripperology, a study of the case, has inspired numerous works of fiction. Suspects have been proposed, including Prince Albert Victor, Walter Sickert, and Lewis Carroll. However, authorities are not agreed upon, and the number of named suspects reaches over 100. The Ripper's identity remains unknown. The Ripper murders in 1880 were a significant turning point in the treatment of crime by journalists. The Elementary Education Act of 1880 made school attendance compulsory, leading to more working-class people in England and Wales being literate. Tax reforms in the 1850s enabled the publication of inexpensive newspapers with wider circulation, leading to sensationalistic and speculative articles. The Manchester Guardian reported on the notorious character Leather Apron, which was later adopted by the press and public to describe the killer. The name Jack was already used to describe another fabled London attacker, spring heeled Jack. Examples derived from Jack the Ripper include the French Ripper, the Dusseldorf Ripper, the Camden Ripper, the Blackout Ripper, Jack the Stripper, the Yorkshire Ripper, and the Rostov Ripper.
The sensational press reports, and the fact that no one was ever convicted of the murders have confused scholarly analysis, and created a legend that casts a shadow over later serial killers. If you liked the video, please hit the bell icon so that you can stay tuned for upcoming videos. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. See you later in another video with a new interesting topic.